The last thing you want as a DBT developer is to deploy a breaking change. Not only will it look like you're not paying attention, but it's also going to frustrate those who rely on those models. And speaking of model dependencies, one area in particular where this problem can be felt is within the reverse ETL process. So in today's video, I want to show you a cool feature within census, a leading reverse ETL platform that will not only help keep your models in sync, but also more importantly, I want to show you how you can add an automated check directly to GitHub so that you never again deploy a change that's going to break a reverse ETL model. So let's dive in. So the first step to integrate with DBT is to come over to the models section here. And in this case, instead of writing a typical SQL model, instead, we're going to click DBT project and we'll go through the steps here. Pretty straightforward. And I will select add GitHub repository and it's going to ask you to sign in. And right away, we can see it's connected and recognize the different branches in your repository. So for me, I only have the one that's main. Next, we have the DBT project configuration. And if you're familiar with DBT, a lot of these terminologies should make sense to you. And in this case, our census role only has permission to this database. So that's why it's showing analytics here. Schema prefix is going to follow the typical DBT convention. So if you go back to the DBT docs, you may have that concatenated look to your schemas. In my case, I just have Marts. So there's no prefix before it. For the model selector, this is going to be based on the operator in DBT. Again, if you have maybe certain tags or just want to select a specific path, you can add that here. And for project path, if you have multiple projects in your profiles, we'll We'll just keep this as is and go ahead and connect dbt so as we can see here it loaded in all of the models based on the file names in our project and we can see it's bringing in all of the models we have our intermediate staging as well as marts and that's because if we go back to the settings we didn't indicate a model selector so maybe instead of bringing everything in we just want marts dot star which would only bring in those that have marts in it update and now we can see it's just giving the marts model so you can trim that down however you want now that we have this here it's going to allow us to look at some of the metadata within it so if you click on one of these models it will bring you in here and you can see the different properties of all the columns within it how many sinks are involved you can go to the query and it will show you the actual query itself and again the value of this here is that all of your work is still happening in dbt but you have visibility and full transparency within census and your downstream tools as well so everybody's on the same page. You can click preview here to run the query and it'll give you a preview output. Here's the compiled query of what is actually being selected for this model, as well as some other history that we don't have yet. The last thing we'll do here is come back and approve the model because that will allow us to use it then in a sync. So we've now connected DBT to census. Let's now go and create a sync to move data from our warehouse into a Google sheet by having it reference our DBT model. To create the sync, we'll go to sync and add a sync. Now we already have our Snowflake connection set up and from the source here, it's already recognizing our DBT models. We can see them right here and they become an option. Alternatively, you could do the typical warehouse. Uh, there's nothing really stopping you from just doing it that way. But the benefit again is that it's keeping you in line with your DBT project. And it's also going to allow us to do some of the additional features later to make sure all the dependencies are together. And that will make sense in the next part of this video. But for now, let's select customers and we're going to sync the data to a Google Sheets connection. The object is customers. And all that's saying is I have a blank Google Sheet here with a customers tab. It's going to take the data from this table and move it here. We can just see all these are properly mapped. We're not gonna run a test because I'm pretty confident that this is going to work, but you could test this here and we'll click next. Again, here's a review of what's gonna happen. We're gonna run this sync now and create it. All right, so this is completed. If we go over to our Google Sheets, now we can see this data was dropped in here through census and all this was connected and recognized through the DBT integration. And one thing we need to be careful of is having different people working here in census and different people building the DBT project that it starts to get out of sync and we don't want that to happen. So to help with that, the next thing we'll do is look at adding an automated check to our project to make sure that any changes to the project are not breaking downstream changes here in census. To add the CI check integration, go over to configure and down here we can see automatic tests in DBT. And there's a clear button here that just says enable CI CD tests. Go ahead and click that. And we can see it says no check has been queued due to the following error. There are no PRs to test on. So in order for this to work, you do need an open PR at the time of this 
enabling, at least at the time of this recording, so that it can test it out and just make sure that it can recognize your pull requests and just kind of connect correctly. And I'll open up a pull request. I'm not going to add any uh, content here just for the sake of time. And so now we have an open PR request. Now we'll go back to configure and enable CI CD tests in GitHub. And right away, it's going to confirm that there is a check queued for an open PR. We can either click this link right here, or we can see on our current one right away, census was running that check. So let's go ahead and close out of this. So now that we have this implemented, it's essentially going to run this check and give you an early warning as a DBT developer that you're not accidentally breaking something downstream here in census. So let's just see an example of what it would look like if it did break. So what we can do is go back to our code. I'm going to create a new branch called census checks Two, And this time what we'll do is we'll change the name of this from customers to customers overview. And by making this change, it's going to give us a different model name, meaning this model will no longer exist and it's going to have something else. So that should be a breaking change. Go ahead and push that up. And now we'll, we'll open a new PR here. And right away we can see census is running this check. So it's confirming that the details match and let's see what happens. Jump into the details. Here now we can see it did actually fail and it's recognizing that this particular model is missing but has dependencies and it's giving you the specific error message of that particular sync that's missing. If you click this, it's gonna take us back to our sync and we can see exactly what the problem is. And again, just to drive it home here, the main value now is as DBT developers, we can see before this ever gets to main that this is gonna break something downstream and we don't need to wait for somebody to see this error over here in census. We can get it called out to us right away and make the changes accordingly. This is just the start of how you can use DBT and census to optimize your full analytics workflow. But there's just one problem, and that's that none of this is really useful unless you truly understand the value of reverse ETL in the first place. So check out this next video to learn all about what reverse ETL is and why you should consider it in your data stack.